Guys, welcome to the kitchen garden. I'm so proud of this here. My veg that I've grown from scratch, these little seeds. It's one of the most amazing feelings. And today's video is a little bit different. I'm gonna give you a tour of the garden. And plus, look at this. This is my new kitchen in the garden. I'm having like house renovations, so I still haven't got my indoor dream kitchen done yet. But in the meantime, might as well take advantage of the beautiful weather that we always have in Wales and film outside. And I've got this lovely, amazing custom made grill for me by a company called Fire Pits UK. I haven't cooked on it yet, but we're about to film on this cooking an amazing recipe over the next couple of days. So stay tuned for that. And also got a lovely little island here with this Olive stove. Also they supply me with an oven too. So we're gonna be cooking out here all the time now. It's gonna be epic and hopefully the sun comes out soon. I, could, I can cook with my veg that I've grown. Anyway, let's do the garden tour. So I have to give a big shout out to my dad because he's been helping me in the garden, building new beds with me. And also we put this lovely gravel down, but I have a big problem in the garden. I'm hoping in the comment section, you can help me with this because there's a mole or several moles digging up my garden, disturbing my vegetables. We put this lovely stone down. I literally hurled tons and tons of this stone up a hill and got it here. And now this mole has destroyed it. It looks so messy and I'm so sad and annoyed about it. So I need some tips on how I can safely remove Mr. Mole or, and his friends and get him out of here. Cause there's a whole, this feels everywhere that it can go and dig up, just not my vegetable garden. Cause this is my food. This is what I eat. Anyway, forget about Mr. Mole. We still got some lovely veg to show you. Look at my salad here. Now this salad, I've been eating non-stop for the last month. You just peel off the outer leaves, whip up a nice dressing, and you've just got fresh salad. That's, there's nothing better than this salad, honestly. It's so easy to grow your own salad. You've got to try and do it. And I've got some uh, kale, which is another favorite thing for me to grow. Favorite things to eat, to be honest with you. Whether I steam it or stir it through a stew or just have it as a salad, the best thing in the world. I've got a mixture of curly kale and cavolo nero which is italian dinosaur kale it's often called it's looking so so healthy and at the end here i've got this asturian tree cabbage which is something that i've never grown before and i was gifted the seeds from gardener friend of mine you should know him if you're into gardening on youtube hugh richard so he's he raves about this stuff so um i'm gonna let this grow and give it a taste soon so here, guys, another lovely bed of mine that the mole is disturbing, but it seems to be thriving anyway. This is all my carrots. Now, this year I planned on just sowing as many seeds, uh, carrot seeds as possible because, you know, I juice carrot, I eat them all the time. They're so good for you and there's nothing better than freshly grown organic carrots. So I've got loads here. I've got a variety of Paris market carrots, which are the baby ones and then rainbow carrots and oh, I just I love carrots so much this smell is amazing and uh, you can make things with the the carrot tops too I made a lovely pesto with them recently so so much can be done with carrots and uh, let me see how they're looking now it's probably a long way off but look oh this one has actually hit a stone when it is growing <laughs> but still nothing better than picking some carrots it's only little now he's got they've got a few more weeks to uh, to grow before being harvested. And just in amongst these carrots, I've got onions and chives, which apparently deter carrot root fly, which is a pest that often carrots suffer from. This video is kindly sponsored by Ritual. I've been taking Ritual's multivitamins for the past couple of months. And with my healthy plant-based diet, they have almost become a nutrient backup plan, making sure I've got all the nutrients my body needs, giving me that peace of mind and making it just really convenient. Previously, I would take several different capsules, but I was super impressed to see that Ritual has over 10 essential vitamins my body needs, especially things like B12 and omega-3 from algae, which is often supplemented on a vegan diet. The capsules are of course vegan friendly and they use this super smart, super clever delayed release capsule design, which means the vitamins are more likely to absorb into my system and are not gonna upset my stomach. Ritual have a vast array of different multivitamins to suit your age and gender. They're non-GMO, they're clean, 
and they're also easy to take. What I find really cool as well, they have this minty, fresh smell when you open the capsule bottle, so they don't smell bad like many other multivitamin brands. So guys, if you want to get some Ritual multivitamins of your own, click the link below this video and you'll be directed to their site. Thank you so much to Ritual for sponsoring the video. It means the world. It means we can continue making these epic videos. Now, back to the video. This is the garlic section. Total experiment for me. Never grown garlic before, but all I did back in October is just get some garlic from the supermarket, organic garlic, planted the cloves in some soil, and each one is gonna turn into a big bulb. Now, these were doing amazingly well. They still are doing okay, but the mole has got underneath this, and I feel like this is the bed that it's been living under the most, and it's just pushing up the soil, so I'm worried it's gonna be disrupting the bulbs, but we're still getting some nice thick stems here and these aren't going to be ready to harvest for a couple of months, maybe six weeks or something like that. So there's still time. Fingers crossed the mole hasn't affected my garlic supply. Mmm, super exciting that I just picked this with you because this is the first bulb of garlic that I picked and it's so amazing to see that we have got a bulb forming. I was just thinking that there would be no bulb. Every time I plant a seed or something that I haven't grown before, I never expect it to work. And when it work, does work, I get super excited. So this needs a few more uh, weeks to really swell and get bigger. But in the meantime, I, this won't go to waste. I can use this, all this green and this little bulb here will just be very intense, fresh garlic flavor. Just stir fry that, add it with some greens and things like that, it'd be beautiful. So this bed, it's just a mini bed. and. I put a little bench on it here and also a little place where I can do some potting and things like that. But in here, I just sowed some mustard lettuce or mustard leaves. And what we have here is just a variety of this beautiful aromatic uh, greens and purples that you can just put in a stir fry or just eat in a salad. It's so peppery, just like mustard, it's amazing. I love this stuff. And it just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Got some more salad in there, some lovely, look at this. Yeah, this lovely salad as well. This is just a bit of a mess, this bed, but it's actually a beautiful mess. So, lovely bit of salad. Mmm. And I've noticed that this sort of purple lettuce variety is less likely to be eaten by any slugs and things like that. And this nasturtium, you see this on all the fine dining plates at Michelin star restaurants and things like that. Nasturtium, obviously it's a, it's a lovely flower, but everything can be eaten, including the, the leaves, the seeds and the flowers themselves. And this tastes like wasabi. Honestly, this is the most incredible flavor. It also just looks so beautiful too. Mm. Unbelievable flavor, wow. It's like, it's wasabi. Now we're coming down to my pea section, the pea aisle of the supermarket. I don't, I can't remember the name of the variety of peas, but they're different to these ones. So I'm intrigued to see which is better. Onions just dotted around because I must have planted so many onion seedlings that I just dot onions everywhere, but you can never have too many onions, right? But these pea shoots are just like so nice just to eat. But soon they'll have lovely sweet peas and they are amazing to just have in the garden. I don't think last year I made one dish with my peas and I had about the same amount because the rest of the time I'm just picking them and eating them as and when. Pop some potatoes here. I kind of wish I didn't though. I should have just did them all in buckets because this is good real estate for some nice vegetables. But uh, I mean, potatoes are so important because there's great source of carbohydrate and you can just get such a bounty of them when you, when you plant them. So it's nice digging up potatoes too. Here's a lovely ginormous bed. And last year I grew loads of beans, runner beans. Love them so, so much. The most fresh, beautiful, 
thing, you just want to pick them constantly. So I've got a lovely bunch of runner beans here and I've got one over there too because I just want loads of them. There's also some French beans in there too mixed in. I'm interested to see how this goes. This is amaranth, also known as Callaloo. This is a red variety, but not only can you eat the leaves and that's very popular in Jamaican cuisine and the Caribbean, but also you can eat the grain as well, like a quinoa. So it grows super tall. This is actually called elephant amaranth. I'm thinking it's called that because it grows so, so big. So gonna see how this goes. Definitely planted it too close together, but when I'm working in my garden, I need to keep things tight, but it is what it is. So this is another one of my favorite things. Everything's my favorite, but especially chard. And I've just finished a load of chard that I had um, for the last few months. With this amount here, I've got about 15 plants, which is loads. I'm probably gonna get about, actually I can't even say a number, but a ton of kale, constant supply of kale all through the summer. And I'll just keep sowing seeds into the little module trays throughout the next few months so that when this, go, when this goes a seed and runs out, I've got more to go straight into the ground after. Consecutive sowing, I think that's called. Just a little boring bed here, but it won't be boring soon because I've got celery seedlings in here and I've got some leeks. And I've sown the leeks like uh, my new friend, Charles Dowdin, who I met the other day. <laughs> I can call him my friend. Well, I hope I can call him my friend. He's a big inspiration anyway. I met him the other day. He wants to do a video with me, which is kind of cool. So we'll do that in the future. But anyway, some leeks and I've sown them in twos and threes like Charles does. And then you can just pick up a bunch of le leeks every now and then. So um, excited for those. They're doing well in this bed. The mole's destroyed some over there, but the mole. Talking of my buddy Charles, he actually also said in a video to multi-sow beetroot because they like growing together. Everyone sort of thinks, and I thought too, that, you know, because beetroot swell and get quite big, you know, they'd want to be spaced apart. And I have done that successfully in the past, but actually multi-sowing them into your little seed pots uh, and then wait until they're seedlings and then planting them is actually convenient because you get like a bunch of three and they actually push each other apart as they get bigger, like I'll show you now. See here, look, we've got three lovely beetroots growing in harmony. Actually four, there's four here, but they're swelling up and these will be ready to harvest in a matter of weeks. Look at that. So it's just amazing to see that just in this one meter squared area, I'm going to be able to harvest about 50 beetroots, 50 individual beetroots, maybe more, which is amazing. Plus you can juice and eat the leaves. I could have done this on my balcony when I lived in London if I just got a one meter square little um, bed, raised bed, I could have done this. Why didn't I do it sooner? I could have been eating organic, fresh, homegrown food way sooner. So here I have a row of raspberry plants that went in a few months back just with little canes that I ordered offline, planted them in some compost and they seem to be doing well. I'm not really sure whether I'm going to get some raspberries this year but I know that once these have established they're going to just supply me with fresh berries for a long time to come and I have various different I have yellow raspberries over there too and I also have some um, currants as well dotted around so we'll see how they get on also have like herbs dotted everywhere I probably should have like a little herb garden or herb designated bed but I like dotting around I love cilantro I have it everywhere loads of cilantro and then I have a lovely little herb section here including some lavender and some chamomile and some lemon balm because I like making my own fresh teas and some calendula. I really want loads of flowers. Um, I think that will attract and pollinators and all kinds of insects to help the veg anyway. So I need to get into my flowers but that's something that I'll focus on soon. Now here's actually uh, potatoes that I've sown in buckets. So, you know, from one potato, I'm going to probably have a kilogram, no, two kilograms of potatoes eventually when I'm ready to harvest this. So the good thing about sowing in buckets is that you don't have, really have to dig anything up. You don't have to disturb the soil and you're not going to mess up anything else that's growing around the uh, potatoes. And I've done a whole tutorial on growing potatoes and you can click this link here to see it and I'll show you some lovely recipes with the potatoes too. These are strawberries. The plants were given to me from Hugh Richards when I visited him and uh, they're doing really, really well. I can't wait to eat fresh strawberry from my garden. 
I've got loads more chives in the carrot bed, but just these are from last year and they just sprouted up on their own. And now they've got these lovely flowers, which are so beautiful and they're edible too, but because I've only got two of them, I'm kind of keeping on to them just to attract some bees and stuff. And just because they look absolutely beautiful. I've just noticed here, I remembered I've got some mini tomato plants. They're called Outdoor Girl, the variety, which means hopefully they can grow outside, no problem. Uh, which will lead me into the little greenhouse that I got to show you my tomatoes. So this is my little greenhouse polytunnel thing that I bought for less than £100 last year. Yes, done okay. We have some strong winds here in the winter and things are starting to tear, but I'm ready now to upgrade to a big polytunnel. The only thing is I'm on a hill, so it's kind of difficult. But anyway, it's doing okay and I would recommend something like this for a, uh, a small kitchen garden. And look, I took this out of there the other day and there's already a bee coming because I saw those flowers and I thought, right, the bees need to see these beautiful yellow flowers. So as you can see, this is a bit of a jumble. It's a bit too packed in here. So yeah, this is my little greenhouse, which I'm outgrowing, but it's going to last me fine this year. I've got loads of tomato plants, which again, I started way too early inside my house, but now they're doing absolutely fine in here. They just need something to climb up. And I've also planted some into these fertile fiber bags. Fertile fiber make amazing compost in bags. A vegan, they have vegan compost too, so no animal products are in there. I've actually planted the tomatoes directly in them so I didn't have enough pots so I did that and it's working out really good. I've got various other things like savoy cabbage and broccoli and cauliflower in here too that is all ready to go outside as soon as I got space some more cucumbers and courgettes and this is something I'm so excited for because last year I grew one head of celery just one only one but it was the best celery I'd ever eaten and it was huge so now I've got four times however many is here like 24 uh, heads of celery potentially and it was really easy to grow. So as soon as these get bigger, these are gonna be going outside too, probably in the bed where the garlic is. I'm gonna do one of these tours every month so that you'll, you can check in if the video does well though, because guys, it's a huge amount of effort making these YouTube videos. And if they, can't do, if they don't do too well, it sort of puts us off a little bit to continue making that type of content. We recently did our Mexican tour. Come with me, Tom. Our Mexican tour where me and Tom poured our heart and soul into telling the stories of these beautiful people that we, we met in Mexico. And honestly, I think it's our best work we've ever done. I'm so proud of it. But unfortunately, it doesn't kind of get the views that if I was to do three 20 minute meals, which is fine to do. And I know that you need those recipes. I don't mind it. And I have unlimited amounts in my head, but the kind of content we want to be making is films that inspire and tell people's stories within food. And that Mexican documentary was something that uh, is close to both mine and Tom's hearts. And I would love it if you could go from this video and watch it. Because I know this video is probably going to do better than the Mexico videos, even though those Mexico videos took forever to make. And this is going to make take an afternoon to make. Um, so up here, I've got, as I said, I'm on a bit of a hill. So I was like, what can I do to utilize this hill? Because last year it was just an annoyance, really, because it's hard to cut the grass all the time but um, we started terracing up here me and my dad started digging this I have to give him a shout out because if I said I did all this himself uh, myself he would go nuts because we were digging out here so we've got I've got four terraces at the moment but the plan is if these do well I'm going to go all the way up to the top and uh, have a terraced vegetable patch garden which is great and as you can see here I've got a load of potato plants these potato plants are are collapsing now because the, it's almost ready to harvest really. The potatoes will continue to grow underneath the ground even if these uh, plants will uh, collapse, it'll be fine. But I'm um, really excited to harvest some new potatoes from here and there's going to be absolutely loads by the looks of it. This is probably the bed that I'm most proud of actually because it's so neat and everything's thriving. I've got it under this mesh because I've started seeing quite a lot of um, butterflies around and butterflies absolutely love what I'm growing here the cauliflower so look this mesh will stop them 
Oh, so look how healthy these plants are. Look at this. Beautiful cauliflower leaves. Huge they are. And also we have some beetroot here again. Same thing as down there, multi-sown. So I can see here four lovely golden beetroots thriving here. And I've also planted some more onions there because they, as I said, I had loads of them. And just a quick instruction on how I made these beds. Obviously the hill is going that way. So I leveled it off just by digging and then put some cardboard down, put some wood chippings in. You can just ask your local um, tree surgeon they just need to get rid of this these this stuff so if you just ask them to dump some in your garden or wherever you need it get it from them and then put that down first and then put a layer of compost and then plant into it simple as that and each year just top it up with a little layer of compost on top just to add some fertility to the soil and i just use these chippings around the edge as a little pathway almost so my next favorite bed up here as well I like it be being up here because there's no mole and uh, it's like a fresh start up here, new beds. Uh, corn, just come back from Mexico as I said, the best place I've ever visited and corn is part of the trinity of ingredients that they rely on so much and after eating fresh masa and tortillas I wanted to grow my own corn and see if I can make it myself so I've got quite a few corn plants here got to plant them together so they can all support one another and pollinate one another and I've got a variety of heirloom varieties so we're going to have like multi-coloured corn I hope and sweet corn too super excited for that so last year when I was browsing what seeds to buy for this year's growing season I saw some pumpkins giant pumpkins this, there's this guy on the front cover just stood like this next to this giant pumpkin I thought I got to get them and I've got three plants here didn't think they'd work to be honest, I thought it was a gimmick. But anyway, I've got three plants here, giant pumpkins. We may have the world's biggest pumpkin here, who knows. I've also planted some rhubarb plants because I've been stealing my neighbor's rhubarb. Well, she's letting me steal it, but I love it so much that I had to have my own. So I've got three rhubarb plants and I've got some Jerusalem artichoke here as well. So here I wanted to create a fruit forest so I've got various different fruit trees that I planted with Green Up Britain, this amazing charity that plants trees all around the UK. That's actually a video that we filmed together, so that will be coming out soon too. I've got cherry trees, pear, apple, plum, and they've all flowered, so they're growing, but I probably won't get fruit until for ages, to be honest, maybe when I'm old and gray. No, I'm joking. Maybe in a few years, it'll, I'll have some fruit, I hope. Anyway, there's already some cherries up here, look. These are stellar cherries. So when they go red, the birds will eat them before I be able to get them probably. You can come around here if you dare actually. This is the compost corner. I'm no expert at compost, but I have had quite a considerable amount of compost, homemade compost made already. Now compost and soil is the beginning of life. We need it to live. We need it to grow food. It's so important and you can make your own compost by just putting your kitchen scraps and other garden scraps and organic materials into a pile and leaving it and it'll turn into compost. So that's what I'm doing here. Could be some mice under here. Oh, no, but look. So any old kitchen scraps or pieces of paper or cardboard or wood chips or dried leaves or grass clippings, they go into this and I just you just leave it and then it'll turn into compost that I can grow food in. So the food scraps that I've eaten and used are gonna turn into soil that I can grow more food in. It's a cycle that not many of us are involved in anymore, which is a shame. I've purposely not cut my grass uh, by here because I wanna encourage some wildlife and some natural flowers and all sorts and things like, this is a natural medicine, cleavers, the stuff that sticks on you, this is apparently cleanses your lymphatic system and is used in ancient medicine for years and years and years. Just pop this in some uh, spring water or just bottled water and let it sit overnight and drink it and it's very, very good for you apparently. And also it just tastes like cucumber water basically. So as I said, Fertile Fiber kindly gave me some compost recently. They're actually based around the corner from my house again. It's just meant to be some things like this, like the, the grill and this. 
and I've got some things to repot now. I've got some watermelon plants that are possible to grow in my polytunnel apparently. So I'm going to repot these little watermelon seedlings. Pop them in there. This is your new home, my little watermelon friend. Got to talk to your plants. So there's my little watermelon plant repotted. And you can also get 10% off Fertile Fibers website if you want to order some to your house. They gave me the compost and they're also giving me this 10% discount for you guys. So if you want it, you can get it, but no pressure. Just got to tell you, that's all. I also got some lemongrass, which if I can grow this here, that would be amazing too. So I've got to repot this and then I can use it for my tea. Guys, there we go. There's my little garden tour. Hopefully when you come back here, when we do another tour, it's going to be even more bountiful and that mole would have gone. Don't forget to check out the Mexico series, please, or mean the world if you can continue watching it. That's the kind of content that I'm we're able to produce, but only able to produce it if people tune in and watch. And it's so good that you won't be disappointed, I promise you. Just look at the comments that I've already on there. They mean the world to me, so thank you so much. Anyway, I'll see you soon. Goodbye, guys. I really can't really talk today, so that was probably a rubbish video, but I'm sorry. At least you saw the garden. A bit slow today, aren't I?